What a year it's been for the royal family. No sooner had they got through the attacks from Harry and Meghan in the form of that interview, documentaries and Harry's vindictive memoir Spare, they were facing diagnoses of cancer for two of their members, the King and Catherine. It's no surprise that William described it as one of the hardest years of his life. Well, this weekend we had Remembrance Sunday and it was a joy to see the Princess of Wales in attendance. She has reportedly finished her cancer treatment and will, we hope, fingers crossed, resume all her engagements. Queen Camilla did not attend as she was recuperating from a chest infection. But nonetheless, what a pleasure to see the King, William and also Princess Catherine. Across the pond, if reports are to be believed, Meghan Markle is set to launch a major charm offensive in the hope of rebuilding connections in Hollywood. An insider told One magazine, a lonely Duchess of Sussex will plan to strengthen her friendships this festive season. They said Meghan has been meticulously curating gift packages filled with a selection of all her favourite things and, of course, plenty of her jam to send to the who's who of Hollywood. <laughs> she doesn't really get it, does she? That ship has sailed, honey. I can only imagine she thinks this will work because she is replicating what she would like someone to do for her, i.e. send her things and then she'll forget about everything. But I'm afraid, rightly or wrongly, people attribute the blame for a lot of the suffering the royal family have endured these past few years to her and Harry, of course. And Hollywood don't like it. I'm afraid. No amount of jam will stick and their place in the US is looking more and more precarious as Donald Trump's landslide victory, his love for the late Queen and the disrespect he felt the Sussexes showed is well documented. He may well choose to reopen the visa debacle, possibly why the Duke and Duchess of Montecito appear to be looking for a property elsewhere. Good luck with that. The Sussexes' future in the US is looking ever more shaky. Joining me now is Maureen Callahan. Maureen, really good to talk to you. Now, Prince Harry's future in the US may well depend on Donald Trump's recent election and presidential administration decision uh, regarding his uh, regarding his application. Do do you think Donald Trump will reopen this and have a good look at it? You know, I think um, I I really do think Harry's going to be fine regarding his visa, his application. Um, I think, you know, this election in the United States was such a landslide and such a shock to really half of the country. Um, and Donald Trump has really gotten the ball rolling immediately on what he's planning to do. That He has a very big portfolio with real, real issues. I think that Harry, once again, may find himself down the line of priorities here. I, so the upshot is he, I don't think he needs to worry. Do you think they need to just be quiet? Because if they start talking, then they'll draw attention to themselves and then Donald Trump will get annoyed and he will reopen You know, it's it. so interesting that you say that because I, they have not been seen together, Harry and Meghan, yeah. since August. Yesterday, they released a video message. This is on, you know, again, they're they're creeping into Kate's return, right? On Remembrance Day. They pop up, of course, because they can never let Kate have the spotlight, to release a video message talking about the importance of keeping teens safe from the dangers of social media. It's as with everything they do. Mm. It's very vague, very edgeless very rudderless, there's not much to grab onto, but they somehow felt the need to remind everybody that they're here and they have things to say. Mm. It's just so annoying, isn't it? And Megan's apparently getting together, I think she's on a charm offensive now, putting together a little hamper of things that she likes to send to people who she probably wants to try and charm. Uh, have you heard about this? Um, is this related to American Riviera Orchard? I think is yeah, it's related to that. Yeah, yeah. she's sending out more hampers. Yeah, it's. I, I I don't understand the point <laughs> of doing something again, something that failed to really launch the first time, and doing it again. You know, she's also just taken yet another hit with American Riviera Orchard. There's a lifestyle brand called Harry and David that has just filed a patent issue with the U.S. Patent Office claiming that her company 
is a little too close to some to a product of theirs um, that is named something like Riviera something I forget. But there she's all she's got yet another issue getting this thing off the ground, and it's been how I don't know. You tell me how long it's been since she's been trying to lift this thing up. Mm. I mean, it's not even going to air on Netflix or attended cooking show until sometime next spring yeah I, I don't think that's happening i don't i just i don't think they have the popularity they had i can remember years ago everyone was clicking on everything that said Meghan markle Meghan markle Meghan markle and whilst they're probably still quite big digitally the, the narrative is not positive and that's i don't think that's a good thing it may be great to have lots of clicks but if everything people are saying as you the more and more people find out about you uh, is negative, then it, 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 I don't think that works in their favour. Let's talk about the behind the scenes footage from uh, Donald Trump's campaign, which revealed his reflections on the relationships with the British royal family. Because obviously, Donald Trump was a real supporter and had a real love of the Queen, the late Queen. Yeah, he had a real love of the late Queen, a real respect for her, and I believe is, is a true monarchist, you know, believes in the institution, believes in the importance and the tradition of the royal family. Um, and to your point, you know, this may turn into sort of a more a soft power kind of thing, but it doesn't bode well for the likes of Harry and Meghan, right? It doesn't bode well for access to power here, to getting inside that Trump circle. Um, not that I think someone as woke as Meghan would ever care to, you know, and I think this is really where you're seeing a lot of the friction between the two of them. You know, Harry, having been raised as a royal, understands the, the the importance of being apolitical, you know, and what his power uh, actually can do, even if it's executed in just soft ways. And Meghan is just all abrasiveness, all sharp edges, all moral righteousness. And I think that her brand of wokeness just will not allow for any of that. Also, there are certain things that people really don't like, even if you liked them. Things that might put you off her could be the stuff where, as far as we know, she still hasn't gone to see her very sick father. It's it just, it, you can send out a thousand jams to people you don't know and act like you care. But deep down, what, what is underneath that? That's it's very, very ugly, that sort of behavior, surely. It's such a great point. And, you know, it was it was a big story here in the U.S. of, excuse me, <coughs> Charles giving that address during his tour of New Zealand, I believe, and Camilla breaking down when he talked about he hoped to be well enough to return and how remarkable that was for a family and a, that prides itself on never showing emotion in public. So that was alarming and then you have kate's return and william publicly saying that this year has been brutal mm. that's the equivalent of of william like opening a vein in public like that was a remarkable statement and these two harry and Meghan, are ever on the outside as their family members are battling these very catastrophic illnesses mm. i mean it seems kate is on the men thank god charles seems to be really quite ill and they are not as the holidays approach it seems there is no real rapprochement in the offing it's sad it, it is sad but it's also disturbing that the person that that Meghan Markle doesn't appear to be able to see how that looks you know of all her failings that she, and she's probably got some great characteristics as well but to me that to me is the worst one the fact that you could not acknowledge how that will look to everybody else yet you're so focused on your PR image but you can't see that. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about the 76th birthday. King Charles is going to open the first two uh, coronation food hubs which are which is lovely. We like King Charles. He's good isn't he? Yeah. Um, I That is you know again it's just emblematic of the remit that Charles knows he has which is to be of service. And this is what the royals are are leading with. And Harry and Meghan over here are, you know, to your great point, to not be able to see what mm -hmm. this looks like, to not say to Harry, you know what? You go take the kids, 
spend really good time with your father. See if you can mend fences even just a little bit with your brother. Get that going. Because as you and I have talked about before, mm -hmm. when the day sadly comes that Charles is no longer with us, it really, it's up to William. And right now things are not looking good <laughs> for <laughs> Harry and Meghan to have no. any way back into the royal fold, which we do believe they are going to need. Things are not well over here. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people... <clears throat> And a lot of people kind of look at illnesses and things, and this is disease, disease. And I don't think that the behaviour of Harry and Meghan has helped the royal family in any way. Obviously, I'm not blaming them for cancer, but what I am saying is that that, that stress, that kind of thing, doesn't help. And let's, uh, do you know anything about the, yeah. the new documentary, Her Majesty the Queen Behind Closed Doors? Uh, Queen Camilla meets with domestic violence survivors, um, including Raymond Muthamia, a former Miss England. I'm not sure whether you know about that story. No, you know, that hasn't hit the States yet. Yeah. Um, so we're, we've not heard about that here. But um, again, it sounds fascinating. And it's it seems a bit um, bold for Camilla, really. She's historically like to be in the shadows, by Charles's side, mm -hmm. a support not a star um and i think it's very interesting that she's sort of taking the lead on a campaign a very consequential one and a mm -hmm. good one um and i wonder what that augurs for her going forward in terms of her life and duties as queen and how she really sees herself mm -hmm. it is good to see her because to be fair when she first was with charles everyone absolutely hated her so the fact that she's managed to turn yeah, it she around, knows something about being abused yeah. right in the yeah. public square anyway exactly. she really took it for a while yeah she really did for years years but she loved her man and she just went forward and carried on being herself and wow what a turnaround uh and then finally wonder if you any idea on in terms of christmas because we're getting to that time again when you start thinking Right, well, who's coming over for Christmas? Do you think there's any chance that uh, Harry and Meghan may join the royal family at Sandringham? It does not look good. <laughs> it would be a great plot twist. Mm. But, you know, there are reports here that Camilla is really encouraging Charles not to deal with Harry right now in order mm. to limit his stress. Mm. And one can only imagine that the presence of Harry and Meghan would only increase stress in terms of how much privacy is going to be respected? Is Megan going to be taking notes for the memoir? Are there going to be any sort of surreptitious recordings done? Things of that nature. Mm -hmm. There are reports that Harry and Megan have been invited by his mother's side of the family to spend Christmas with them, but we also know they've just splashed out another few million on a resort home in Portugal with, you know, they're, they have celebrity neighbors. That seems much more Megan's speed. So mm. I would put my money on Christmas in Portugal. Do you think they'll be together for it? Because they've spent a lot of time apart. Seems you know, very... it's so interesting, right? Mm. Because that's a great point. They have this huge mansion in Montecito where one could conceivably not run into one spouse if they wanted to, right? Just you take the East Wing, I'll take the West. But reportedly, Harry has a little bolt hole in LA where he escapes to, to go play video games and keep his clocks on UK time. And, you know, where he tries to sort of, he's been making inroads with former friends that he lost post Megxit. So uh, that's, a, that's a great question. I think just for the sake of the brand, they will make it clear that they were together, even if it's just for a still photo that they released to the press. Mm, I, I'm just watching it. I think their relationship is in trouble, but uh, we shall wait and see. Uh, really good to talk to you. Oh, I agree Maureen. with you completely. Yeah, I think, I think <laughs> it's, it's just not. But hey, you know, we, we shall see. Maureen Callahan, always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much.